Russell Findlay, congratulations on your election as Scottish Conservative leader. Are you a candidate for First Minister? Well, uh, you know, I know this is a rite of passage for all Scottish Conservative leaders. That is the question from broadcasters. Are you going to be First Minister one day? And of course, uh, I'm a realist first and foremost. I'm not going to start making bold promises or uh, uh, predictions that most people would regard as unbelievable. But what I will do as the new leader of the Scottish Conservative Party is go out there and fight for every single vote going across Scotland. So many people across Scotland feel disconnected from the Holyrood Parliament. They don't believe that politicians understand their lives. And I believe that I can show people that we do, that we understand the aspiration and ambition of the people of Scotland. And we would want to deliver on that. And one day, who's to say there could not be a Scottish Conservative First Minister in Butte House? Because the polling looks pretty tough for your party at the minute. It suggests that you're actually in a scrap for third place. How are you going to stop that decline and also hold off Nigel Farage's reform party? Well, we've come through a really bruising general election campaign. Let's not forget, in Scotland, we kept five of our six MPs, which was a terrific result, although that did slightly mask the low vote, uh, turnout we got uh, in Scotland. The, the vote share was far too low, and many of those people who feel scunnered by politics took their support to reform in the general election. So what I need to do is start talking again to the people of Scotland, showing them that we've got their interests at heart. Nobody seems to be speaking up for the ordinary, hard-working majority of people in Scotland, and that will be my job to do that. Does holding off reform mean sounding like reform in the future? No, I don't think we can start emulating reform or indeed any other party. What we must do is come up with a credible range of conservative policies that are rooted in aspiration and ambition, that show people that we want to grow the economy, we want to give everyone the right to a good education and good housing, and we understand people's day-to-day -day needs. You've talked about common sense being your guiding light. And you say you've learned the lessons of having backed Liz Truss. Can I ask you about the tax cuts that you've proposed when you were running for leader? How much will those plans cost? Well, so what I put forward was an economic paper as a starting point for the conversations with our members. But you promised, this, you said you wanted to cut taxes. Yeah. So you must have an idea of how well, much that'll cost. The, the, these are not manifestos. These were not promises. These were conversation points. As conservatives- So you might not cut taxes. Well, no, as conservatives, your... we believe in low taxation. We believe in trusting people to spend, keep more of the money that they earn. The state does not uh, have the right to pick people's pockets and take as much of people's pay packets as they like. But the Scottish so, government is already having to make significant cuts. If you cut tax further, you'll have to cut even deeper. You just need to look at the 17 years of SNP mismanagement of Scotland's public finances. These are the people that were unable to deliver two ferries that have now cost over £400 million. But these are your plans. You put them in your Indeed. economic paper. But you know, the starting point uh, is to get the wasteful spending, the catastrophic mismanagement of the public finances under control. The Scottish Conservatives have the ability taxes. and the discipline to do that and also to looking, going into the 2026 election, to cut taxes for ordinary hard-working Scots where it's appropriate to do so. But you don't know by how much or well, how much it'll cost or it, what you'll have to cut to pay for it. It's far too soon to start deciding on particular policy positions, whether that be on tax it, it was in or any other. Paper. It was, it, it, the aspiration to cut tax is in our core, it's a core principle of conservatism. Do you support the continuation of free university tuition in Scotland? Yes, as things stand, uh, this is part of the est established makeup of the, the, the educational system. Um, I don't believe, however, that a lot of these degrees offer good value for taxpayers, but much more importantly, good value for young people. I had the good fortune as a young journalist well, that, to that do... That sounds like you might want to cut back on some degrees. Well, what, what I'd like to do is... Uh, Again, going back to the taxation question, is speak with colleagues, speak with our members, and build a credible conservative policy platform for the 2026 election. I don't want people, uh, even though tu university tuition might be free for students, many still leave university with significant debt and degree that does actually nothing for them. It doesn't give them the benefit of employment or good employment that they've worked so hard to achieve. And I think we should look again at all of that. Now, at this conference, obviously, the main topic of discussion is the UK Conservative leadership race. Yep. 
Do you think the candidates represent the mainstream politics that you want to bring? I think the four candidates are each and every one brings their own views on how to rebuild the UK party. But are they in the mainstream? I, I, I believe each and every one of them has the best interests of the party and the country at heart. And going forward, as the new leader in Scotland... But you can't say if they're mainstream. Uh, well, I, how would you define mainstream? Well, one of the candidates is, by some measures, the leading candidate, Robert Jenrick, has suggested that he wants to ban the phrase, God is great, in Arabic in public places. Do you support that? So I'm not going to get drawn into potential policy positions of individual candidates who are doing what I've just been through, which is having frank conversations with our members. But is that a mainstream position? Well, so the, I think there was, I think Mr. Jenrick may have apologised for that. I don't know. But the point is, I will work with whoever prevails in the UK contest. What all these candidates are doing is putting forward not just uh, hard and fast positions, but ideas. They're talking about ideas. They're trying to work out what is the best way forward for the party and what's the best way forward for the country. Finally, and Russell, I, and finally, I think is, are, are any of these candidates really going to help you elect Scottish Conservative MSPs in 2026? Well, look, uh, the Scottish uh, election in 2026 will be down to the hard work of the Scottish leader and my team. It will be down to the hard work of our members, of our activists, our councillors, MPs and MSPs, and we will ensure that we fight for every single vote and we show the people of Scotland that we understand their concerns and that we are on their side. Russell Finlay, thank you for talking thank to us tonight. Thank you.